again and welcome to Vance Talk. I'm Tammy Garthwaite. Hi guys, I'm Carla Garrick. Um, warm. It's nice weather. It's beautiful weather. It's going to be almost 80 again today. Two it weeks like to the election. Two, less than two weeks because it's Wednesday. Now. Yes. Um, uh, feels like things are ramping yeah, up. Yeah. Apparently, uh, Oh my God, Trump know. went to work at McDonald's and, and the entire the world well, melted down. And I did, I posted this on Facebook. <laughs> it is true. So I thought it was fun to watch Elon Trumping in Pennsylvania, or Trumping, Stumping, Stumping for Trump in Pennsylvania. Um, Trumping. And then, Trumping. And then <laughs> yesterday, um, Tulsi was at an, uh, um, she rally. Actually and she came out and said, she said, I'm switching to Republican. Yeah. And she, so, uh, you know, she said basically, which I think is is a fair thing to say, you know, the Democrats have now embraced Dick Cheney, who is a warmonger, and I would like to use a more porcine term for the last part of that. Yep. And, uh, I mean, I don't know, Democrats, I don't know what you guys are doing. I feel like you used to be a party of principle. It's really gross out there. It's like the only. And I don't know if, if like my algorithm is just trying to drive me nuts and maybe everyone's algorithm is trying to drive them nuts. But all I see is New Hampshire Democrats asking for money while talking about abortion. Yeah, I don't, you know, I'm, so, in Wakefield, there's a candidate of Democrat female candidate running, and there's four Republicans running, and there are four Republican incumbents. Not all four that are running are incumbents, but there's four Republican incumbents, and there's four Republicans on the ballot, and sh there's this woman. And I see her signs around, and then I'm starting to see people post in like these little Wakefield discussions, just like in Manchester. And like, you know, here's the thing. You can't just post something and think nobody's going to comment on it. And they keep making it sound like she's just this wonderful woman. So I click because I'm like, okay, maybe she's a nice, you know. No, I went to her website. Her top three issues, like she's got three issues listed. Only three. The first one was education and talking about getting rid of um, education freedom accounts. The second one was about abortion and health care options or something for LGBTQ people. And the third one was climate. And I thought... You are so out of touch with the people in New Hampshire, it's not funny. That you are not, you can talk about being cordial and we should get along better and everything, but your policies are downright awful. And that's what I see more and more is like these, dem they really believe that abortion after six months of pregnancy is something, is the hill to die on. Yeah, I don't really understand it. I, you know, I'm very sensitive as someone who has suffered quite heavily under censorship for the past four years yeah. uh, to see what I would bl call blatant misinformation, yeah. like actual untrue statements, yep. statements that have been actually verified, statements that have gone back to like the Trump policy with the whatever Project 2025 some, some is. Some organization that you has know, nothing to do with anybody. And so it's just, it's really frustrating because it's also almost like it's the flavor of what's wrong in the world, right? right? So I would just lie, cheat, and steal, and as long as we get away with lie, cheating, and stealing, it's okay to lie, cheat, and steal and not be well, honest. But it's also like, let's actually parse it out, right? So everyone just yells slogans at each other over the abortion issue, right? right. But when this issue originally came up, it was actually people trying to protect incest and rape cases right, right? like so it yeah, started from a place situations. where you're like okay i get it there's it's kind of really right. creepy to Daddy's force someone you know, uncle tom uncle bob is raping you know susie yeah, like and she ends up pregnant should she have to you know but then what happens when the government gets involved is all common sense and logic is eventually forced out of whatever issue it is, right? So the original things that were told to people is we're going to make it safe, rare, and, and safe something and rare, safe, right. legal, and rare, right. safe, legal, and rare, okay? And it's like, yeah, that kind of sounds reasonable as well, right? It's kind of a personal thing. Maybe it's not everyone's business. Right. Maybe, you know, we shouldn't be seeding, I don't know, the word abortion into the world right. nonstop. As I mean, like, I'm like, this how is a many lifestyle. times? It's like they're, they're making it sound but like... But it's also like, how many times have we... How, how many times has the word abortion now been just printed and pushed out and whatever, right? 
So it's like, really, as a culture, right? This is what we're spending. Our we are energy spending on. all our time and energy on talking about killing your offspring. Right. Now you can call it all yep. the other words right. that you want to do, but there is a life. Terminating your and then offspring. There's not a life. Yep. Okay. And people can differ. I am in the camp that says it should be safe, legal, and rare. But what it should not be is a fundraising <laughs> point because that's gross. <sighs> It's gross, and it I is. call on, actually, all the people who are doing that to stop doing it, because it's not honorable, it's not noble, it's not decent. Right. It's gross. Yep. Um, so Joe Biden was here yesterday, fun times. Um, New Hampshire Journal puts out, like, the headline, qu you know, quotes. So oh, I was I like, did Biden know he was here? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> um, so anyways, these are the quotes that made me crack up, so... If I said this five years ago, you'd lock me up. We got to lock him up. That was President Biden during his campaign stop yesterday, right? So then the next one is, we got to lock Joe up. That comes from a former <laughs> Biden administration of official noting his comment would be politically unhelpful to Kamala. Then we have, for better or worse, no one is listening to him anymore, which is a current Biden official on the president's lock him up quip. So I think that's funny. But then even funnier is... Joe Biden is an extremely accomplished, experienced, and capable in every way that anyone would want if they are president. Absolutely. That is Kamala Harris's comment on Joe Biden's mental fitness now. He is capable in every way. If there's any human out there that actually believes that Joe Biden is capable in any way, I don't know, maybe you're not capable in any way because we... Everybody knows there's something but, wrong. So that's another thing, right? So yes, everyone knows. I mean, trust your gut and believe your own yep. eyes, right? Like, what is this thing where we now live in a society where people literally don't believe what they see because some talking head on or CNN some TV or, or some NBC singer or, or some musician some celebrity or, or whatever tells them differently. says... You know, and, and so this is just a total aside conspiracy theory situation, but for some reason I got sucked into because it's salacious, the P. Diddy stuff, I, right? I don't even, I, I, it goes by and I'm like, oh, I don't usually it'll, pay attention yeah. to that kind of stuff. And the reason I actually am paying attention because I saw the clip of him viciously yeah. kicking his girlfriend's head in yeah. on a video from a, a hotel in, 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 I think it was in LA. And that came up, like maybe it was leaked maybe nine months ago. Yeah. And I remember just seeing it and being like deeply shocked, yep. right? Yep. And, uh, you know, and he came out and he apologized and whatever. And now we're down this gross rabbit hole. So there's a prison call from him that was leaked yesterday. Now, fair enough, it's like where or what, where would that come from? Maybe it's a deep fake, who knows? Maybe don't believe your own eyes, <laughs> but trust your gut. But um, where he basically is saying in the call, he's, he's like, yo, yo, you gotta get rid of those pizza boxes. So the pizza, like, it, that's still in the wrappers needs to, I mean, it's like- They're like, dude, <laughs> this is so obvious. So it's like, okay, let's assume for a second that well, that's a real clip, right? That that got right. leaked out of prison and, you know, well, because they then, are whoever's recorded. making it, let's keep that going, right? But I was like, remember when Pizzagate was happening and there was this debunking and all of it? My point is just, there's a lot of conspiracy theories that, conspiracy theories that, Upon a lot of investigation, end up usually not being so conspiratorial. Aren't actually that ridiculous, no. you know? No. And so once you start to understand that, you actually start to understand the stakes yep. of what is going on with the information warfare, right? There is a reason, and and even here in New Hampshire, I hear people starting to call for censorship. It's like no, you can't censorship. I mean, oh uh, no. You know, and it's just, uh, it's just really interesting to me that uh, the truth is coming out, and as more and more of the truth is coming out, the harder they're screaming about right. shutting down right. free speech. Right, I, well, because we can't be learning anything. We can't be knowing the truth. 
But here's also, I mean, here's a way to think about free speech is, does someone have the right to tell you you are not allowed to speak your mind? No. Okay. So if folks understood that. I mean, they can. That, they, no, they have the right to tell me that. They can't force me not to speak my mind. Right. They but, can tell me whatever they'd like. They have the right to tell me whatever they'd like. Right. But you don't but I do not have, have to, to comply. Listen. Now, in that scenario, I think everyone back home would understand, okay, that makes sense. Now, for folks back home, I'm like, okay, so what is the magic trick that changes that dynamic of, you're not allowed to speak your mind? And you go, shut up, Carla, of course I can, <laughs> right? And then I go, no, no, I am bestowed by special power, right. special to power to tell you actually no. No, you can't. So that is what's going on with people right. who are trying to stop free speech. Right. They're couch couching it in, oh, it's hate speech, or Carla's really mean, or Tammy's yeah. really mean, or you hurt yeah. my feelings. But that's not the point. What they're trying to do is they are trying to stop people connecting the dots. Yes. Yes. Because for the first time in human history, there is a way for people to understand information in a way that has right. never been understood people before. People have way more access to way more things way quicker than we've ever had in our life. But it's not even just access to it. It is, so for a conspiracy to be a conspiracy, they'll say, well, everyone has to be in on it. I sort of disagree. I think it's just there can be a conspiracy that when you connect the dots, those people may not know. Right, right. But when you put it together, you're like, oh, maybe someone is right. cloud seeding. Right. You know, maybe you have FAA records and you have a lady over here saying, I'm ordering barium and I don't know why. And maybe you have <laughs> someone over here saying, I did a whistleblower case yeah, yeah. and blah, right? And so it's those connecting of the dots that they actually yep. fear. Well, because it might actually tell us something. They the truth. Right. And in a way that is actually graspable, right? Like 20 years ago, if you knew something, like if I knew something and I read but it how in would a, you get it out? Right, you know, in, in some... If I you, you determined in your world that this is probably happening, well, what are you going to do? You're going to tell me and you're going to tell that person, that person, and the seven of us can talk about it. Right. Now, a million people can talk about it in an instant. Yeah, it's amazing. And, and if for anyone who's not on X, I really do recommend you get on there and fight for our right to free speech. Um, I do want to look something up before. Um, so the Internet's going to break on Friday night. The what? The Internet. Is what? Um, the internet will break. All the intertubes are going to break. Oh, the internet's going to break on Friday night? Yep. Why? Joe Rogan has 14.5 million followers and Trump is going on the Oh, Rogan yeah. It's still, at least X is the probably going to go broke. down. Everything's going to be <laughs> um, It is very interesting when you think about it that he's doing this 10 days before the election. And that's got to make the Democrats, their heads are going to explode and the internets are going to break because. If you've never watched Joe Rogan's show, he's like as fair as fair can be. I mean, he he's not a pro-Trump guy at all. Um, he's very intelligent. He's got his own opinions. It, there are no um, restrictions on what is discussed on the show. He will not, and it will not be your normal conversation. Like I, Dan said to me, he goes, they'll talk about wrestling. They'll talk about, you know, like, because these are the things right. that Joe Rogan talks about, right? Yeah, MMA um, fighting. Yeah, they'll talk, and Trump would make sense in there. And he'll ask, I'm sure he'll ask Trump, some tough questions about some of the things Trump Oh my God, said so that. Trump was wrestled. Do you know this? I don't know. I mean, not I wrestled, wrestled, know wrestled that. Like, but was during involved the, like, in, yeah. in the Ed McMahon and the WWF yeah, he was or like whatever. A guest and he was, yeah. I, I thought it was like a buddy double no, or something, but it it's actually him. him. And I yeah. was like, hey, kudos. Um, That's not it. But like, you 10 actually, days out talking about conspiracies and misinformation, that's not enough time for the Democrats to misrepresent what discussions will happen on this show. Well, so the thing that's interesting, the reason I was... On In time for the election. Right. The reason I was spun up about the censorship stuff is actually because of, you know, so, so for the sake of YouTube, I'm now going to call election whatever election tomatoes. Okay. So the election tomatoes that actually happened in yes. 2020 were right. the 51 CIA agents and former intelligence agents who literally lied to say the Hunter Biden laptop Didn't, was, was fake. fake. 
and it was not. And it was also gross, guys. So, you know, like this whole note of like sort of what people represent, if you're not gross, I mean, Trump's not for everyone. Nope. But honestly, go vote for the Republicans locally in New Hampshire who are running. Do that at least. Um, speaking of elections in New Hampshire. <laughs> yes, I'm going to be the least popular so, person in New so, Hampshire. So <laughs> um, I pulled up just because, you know, I hear things and then I'm like, okay, this, can I find some actual numbers? I, pull, I pulled up New Hampshire governor's polling numbers. Um, I have heard multiple times in the last couple of days that... Um, the New Hampshire governor's race is one of the closely, like the closest watched race in the country. Like it, it's not the most important race. It's just the most on the radar of most things. Um, so this is from a website called 270 to win, which is obviously based more for federal elections, but they do have state polls. Um, Cause I wanted to find something similar. So the most recent poll was from the 17th of October. So that's less than a week ago. Um, it was from UMass Lowell, uh, 60 voters. So, you know, what does that tell you? Um, 41% Craig, 42% AOT, 17% other. So that does show that AOT is still leading. Um, then behind that with the next nearest one they have listed here was from October 3rd, which is, you know, three weeks ago. That was 2,100 voters, um, from St. Anselm College. That one had AI up 47 to 44 with only a 9% other. Um, so things still look like AI is edging out Craig, um, which is how I expect it to be. I do expect that race will probably be closer than we would have liked to have thought it would have been a year ago because who the hell votes for Joyce Craig after watching her manage Manchester for all these years? I mean, it goes back to the same thing. The who Democrats are spending b millions of dollars on um, telling you that we're all anti-abortion and you can't trust Kelly Ayotte. Well, I love the, uh, the big yellow signs that say, Joyce Craig, higher taxes. That's reality. Joyce Craig um, failed us. Joyce Craig failed us. Joyce Craig failed Manchester in so many ways. Uh, if, you have, if you are watching this and you live in New Hampshire and you're outside of Manchester, trust me, as a Manchester resident, you, you don't want Joyce Craig running the state of New Hampshire. Um, so that's what's going on there. Um, what, like, who's behind her like what who because honestly there's a the, the whole new hampshire i think there's the, a whole the new machine? hampshire cabal that's the ray <laughs> uh, ray ray ray, ray, who ray sometimes ray. watches this yeah, show i mean it's just the same he's people been, he's such a oh my god what a nasty a, little man yes. <laughs> um i do want to mention that on saturday there's a republican women's day of action and what that entails is there's no no coordinated effort like you have to meet at this point or whatever what there's uh, the Republican women are saying um, I know Victoria is the one who spearheaded this idea got the women's groups together got a bunch of women involved um, there's a press conference tomorrow morning Thursday up at the State House oh, wow. um, talking about this um, it's Saturday this Saturday 10:26 and what we're encouraging is all women Republican women who want to help other Republican women who are running for office just reach out and contact your favorite re Republican candidate. You know, if you want to help Victoria Selden, contact Victoria Selden. If you want to help Carla Garrick, contact Carla Garrick. And then go out and help them. Whether you're doing a sign wave or knocking on doors for them or making phone calls, there are so many great women candidates. I mean, Kelly Aya is in that list. Um, you can you could go work for Lily Tang Williams. You know, like there are endless candidates that you can get out there and help. Just reach out to them. If you can't find somebody, um, you could reach out to the state GOP and they, I'm sure, would connect you with a Republican woman candidate. Um, that's this Saturday, 1026. Um, they were saying, the, the message of the press conference is that Republican women don't accept the Democrat narrative. We're, I'm sorry, we just don't accept what you would like people to believe about us. Um, and there's a big emphasis on uh, protecting girls' sports, spaces, and opportunities, defending education, freedom, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, you know, all the basic things, no income, no sales tax, all those things. Um, Sorry, so I'm just happening. laughing because, you know, to me it's just so amazing. I'm back to the messaging and the magic tricks they do, right? Yep. Because, you know, one of the things you'll see a lot that the Democrats do, and this really does get my hackles up, this was my, I think, last fight mm -hmm. with Ray Ray, is, is the one where they're like, 
you can't, like, they just go back to the same neural programming, yep, the yep. same messaging, right? So this is from 10 years ago, which was like, don't stand between a doctor and his patient, right? right? Like, don't get between, don't let the government get between a doctor now and their want, patient. Except when we want to jab you yes. with experimental then uh, then the government medicine and you. mandate, yeah. mandate yeah. that you have to take it. Then it's a different thing because why because remember that magic trick somehow i have the power now to like magically be like you must do what i say yep. who does that well it's like the democrats like, they, this is what they're doing with victoria and it's funny because we just keep chuckling so you know you 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 compile your literature you compile your ads you know and focus on the things that matter now victoria's messaging hasn't changed ever because she is who she is. She support, you know, the, she supported education freedom, you know, eight, ten years ago. Right. She still is, nothing's changed, you know what I mean? And um, the Democrats don't like that she's, I think, getting doing well. So now they're trying to say to her, including Ray Buckley um, and Kathy Sullivan, um, oh, Victoria, you're just trying to rebrand yourself. And it's like, no, Democrat peoples, you're trying to rebrand Victoria <laughs> into something she's not. Her branding hasn't changed. Do you it's know the same thing. How funny that is because I remember when I ran for Senate the first time. Uh, may, actually, this might have been the second time. I think the first time they just hung me out to dry. The second time, you know, they took me into some meetings, and I remember, and I think it was. Actually, I'm not going to say who because yeah. I'm not 100 yeah. percent sure, but it was a Democrat. Actually, said to me. When I asked them how many of these forms, right, you get these hundreds oh and hundreds God. of just forms of people who are, that's where you actually see how big and how In corrupt yeah. and whatever government is, right? Like it's all these special interests being like, will you do me a favor when you get in there, right? And so, because I'm very principled in what I believe, it's very simple for me to answer yeah. those, right? So I was like, oh, I'm just gonna answer them. Um, and the senator said, Oh no! Like you can't because you like. How do you remember what you said la the next time, right? Well, I, and I was I'm kind of like, I, I, so I, your I, position just changes yeah. depending on like, I don't know which way the wind blows. I mean, I understand that's why we get incumbents and they're in there and they're in there forever, and then they go, yeah. you know, if they're a Congress oh. critter, they go in with two hundred thousand dollars and yeah. come out with two hundred million, and yeah. yet yeah. don't ask questions yeah. about how. Yeah. The regulatory yeah, system Yeah, you know, works. it's easy. It's just, I mean, it's one of those things in life. It's easy to be consistent when you're telling the truth. Once you start not being honest, that's when it's hard to keep track of what you need to say and what you need to do because right. you and have to remember what your last lie or mistruth was. To, to, to like cover. To remember to. So I, I'm going to tell a little story from this morning sure? from Rite Aid in oh, West I saw Manchester. This. this is interesting. And uh, so I was waiting in line to pick up some hormones, which <laughs> doubled in price like in mm -hmm. one month. And I was like, what's that about? So I have to go research that, right? But you know, th it's one of those Rite Aids where there's one line with a lot of counters. So I was over here, but there's a shelf here. And so there was an elderly lady kind of over there. So she did snake in front of me. But when she noticed, she's like, oh, sorry, I'll go behind you. And I was like, no, no, go ahead. You know, I, I got time. I'm just getting hormones. So she goes up to the counter and she's like, hi, I'm here for a COVID shot. And I'm like, ugh. And now I'm standing there and I'm like, do I do something? Do I have courage of my convictions? Do I just let it go? It's really none of my business, which I rightfully understand. Right. All of that. And luckily, you know, the, the, the um, pharmacist was actually like, well, when did you have your last one? And she was kind of push, not pushing back, but she was, you know, she's like, well, go complete these forms. Here's a clipboard. Right. And she sent her to the, you know, the yeah. waiting room, I suppose. So I'm standing in line, and I'm like, okay, and I get my medicine, and I'm just like, I, th I think I have to go say something, right. right? So I went over, and I was actually really, I mean, I'm well-skilled in being polite, I suppose, because of my diplomatic upbringing, but I was just like, hey, I know you probably don't want to hear this, right? So that is just saying, I, you know, hey, deflection, right. I, I, I get it, I'm, I'm intruding here. I was like, but I really just feel called to come over to tell you I don't think you should get that shot. It's not safe. I think you should go home and do some more research, you know, and can, you can come back tomorrow if you're right. if you're persuaded and you feel good about the decision, but I don't think you should just yep. do it because someone told you to get a booster. Right. 
And she just looked at me and, you know, and, and like Louis's father got his second inoculation yeah. and passed away very soon after that. And he was fine till then, right. right? And they were in an old age home and locked down and all of that, right, in South Africa. And I was like, because family members of mine have been hurt and killed. And she just looked at me, and I feel like we really did have an exchange yep, yep. of, like, she didn't seem angry or anything. She was like, oh, genuinely, like, okay, I see your concern yep. for me. And I was like, I'm just going to leave it there. And I was like, you know, whatever. And then I left. Yep. And I'm hopeful. Maybe she yep. went home, did a little more research, and then made a decision. Maybe she goes, yes, this is what I want to do. Yep. But also, I hope maybe, maybe she well, stopped. Well, at least, even if she, like you said, even if she still decides she wants to get that booster shot, at least maybe you've made her stop and think whether she, whether she actually wants you to know, get like it. You know, like, I have uh, clients that I'm showing homes to now, and they must be in their mid-30s. Yeah. And so over the weekend, they canceled a couple of showings, and I was kind of like, what's going on? And then the next thing was like, well, my wife's sister passed away, which she's got to be in her 30s, right. maybe 40s, right. maybe 20s, right? right? But definitely in that age gap. She's not 70. And I was kind of like, what happened? And they're like, well, she went and got a flu shot and dropped dead, you know, two days yeah, later. And so, you know, cumulatively, honestly, I mean, I saw, I, I, you know what? People are waking up because I'm seeing a lot of these tech bros <laughs> getting on stage and saying things like, maybe we should look at 78, yep. you know, jabs for yep. children, yep. you know, as the schedule. Maybe there is something woefully, woefully, woefully wrong with what we're up to. And there is. But we can fix it if you vote for the right people. Um, before we run out of time, I do want to mention that this Sunday, October 27th, is We Heart West's Trunk or Treat. Um, if you've never been to a trunk or treat, people park their vehicles and open up their trunks and decorate their cars and yeah, everything and give out candy. It's an alternative to the nighttime trick or treating or, or in addition to nighttime trick right. or treating, um, especially for littler kids. Anyways, that is this Sunday at St. Mary's Bank on the West Side. It's from 1.30 to 3 o'clock. If you have any questions or you want to set up a trunk, it's info at We Heart West. You have to spell out the word heart. Info at WeHeartWest.org. And also regular trick-or-treating. Thank you, Phil Grazza, for always getting um, pushing to get trick-or-treating back on Halloween. Um, is Thursday, October 31st, Halloween, which is next Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. in Manchester. If your kids are going out, just make sure that they know not to do stupid things or talk to crazy people because there's plenty of them around. <laughs> Anyways. It'll probably be fine. It'll, or go with them. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, Mark, just go to Trunk or Treat. Uh, that's all we have. If you have any questions, email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. If you haven't voted yet via absentee, if you're not going to be available to go to the polls, you can still do that. Um, you can register to vote through this Friday at the City Hall. Otherwise, you'll have to register at the polls on Election Day. That's all we have. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.